I've repeatedly seen people asking the same question in Apple forums with a bit of hope. Will the Apple Silicon Mac Pro be any cheaper? And I really don't blame people. The Apple, or I mean the Mac Pro, is so expensive that it's out of reach of most users. So in this video, what I wanted to do was talk about how people are arriving at some of those prices you see online, and then discuss why I don't like this method, and some of my thoughts on the price, and then at the end, I'm going to talk about why I don't think I will be buying an Apple Silicon Mac Pro. So let's get into this. I don't believe this is a very serious way to arrive at a price, but it's probably ballpark to the real world. The strategy here is to try and guess how much Apple is going to charge for each set of components, and then add that number up. It's not that hard. Mark Gunnerman of Bloomberg has been the Apple Silicon whisperer. I don't know what his connection is, but thus far he has predicted very accurately every iteration of the Apple Silicon, so we can take his word at face value for these tabulations. On screen are the two known configurations. This doesn't mean these are the only configurations, just the ones that we know about. Let's run some numbers and get through this kind of quick. The baseline Mac Mini starts at $699 with an 8-core CPU with an 8-core GPU and 8 gigabytes of RAM, that's a lot of 8s, and 256 gigabyte SSD. On this particular computer, Apple believes it costs $200 for 8 additional gigabytes of RAM. This holds true on the M1 Pro, where Apple charges $400 for an additional 16 gigabytes of LPDDR5. But when we look at the M1 Max, Apple charges $400 again, this time for 32 gigabytes of additional LPDDR5. So for the sake of this kind of back of the napkin math, we're going to go with the lower price, which is $400 for 32 gigabytes of RAM, which equals $12.50 per gigabyte. Fun fact, LPDDR5 is actually cheaper per gigabyte than actually DDR5. At least while recording this video, that'll change. Calculating GPU core prices is a lot easier because Apple's very consistent here. They charge $200 per eight additional cores, as you can see on screen, or translated to $25 per core. Then there's the matter of the CPU, and let's not try and overthink this one. We don't have a simplistic way to calculate the cost. Apple's M1 Pro has an 8-core and a 10-core CPU. They charge $200 for additional 2 cores on the M1 Pro. This is pretty stupid, but please just bear with me. Apple's charging $100 a core. Now let's talk SSDs. On the M1 series, Apple charges $200 to upgrade to 1 terabyte from 512 gigabytes, and $400 is absolutely bonkers even today for PCI 4.0 SSDs, so let's say it's $300. Again, this is the type of math people are doing. Then using the power of solver, we're going to tally all this up. That's how we get the price for the Jade 2C. And for the Jade 4C, we're going to do the laziest thing possible, which is to double the price. And now we have our mythical Mac Pro prices. Now obviously, this is not how computer prices are tabulated. It's not 100% clear what the SOC breakdown is based on the rumors currently, but it seems fair to assume at least some of these are going to be multi-CPU. Apple has to multiply its CPU yield to manufacture this computer based on how many CPUs are in the box, and then there's the cost of the interconnect technology, the case, the power supply, and so on and so on. Unlike its competitors AMD and Intel, who have multiple avenues to try and salvage bin CPUs, Apple does not. This is why I'd be very surprised if the Apple Silicon Mac Pro is cheaper than the Intel Mac Pro. The other more compelling reason I'm positive the Apple Silicon will be more closely priced to the Intel Macs is that the Apple Silicon has caused prices to mostly go up on the iPhones and the MacBook lineup. There are some outliers like the Mac Mini, which starts for $100 cheaper than this old Intel variant, but this version also sacrifices some I.O. There's just been no evidence that Apple's lowering prices with its own Apple Silicon. This is also right now being exacerbated by inflation. If I had to bet, I would guess the price being between $5,000 to $6,000 for the entry model, although I wouldn't even be surprised if it was a little higher than that. 
Also, I'd be very surprised if the Apple Silicon Mac Pro is upgradable. And if it is, it'll be likely something stupid like Apple NGFF SSDs like the ones found in the 2019 Mac Pros that need to be OEM because of the T2 security. Apple Silicon has this baked in, so that requirement could still be there. On the RAM front, Apple Silicon uses LPDDR, which is the low power cousin of DDR. I geeked out about LPDDR5 in my M1 Max review, but the short of it is, LPDDR is fast but not modular. I've linked in the description of this video to the part where I talk about LPDDR5 in that video if you're curious. The RAM is probably not user upgradable. Then there's the form factor rumors, which doesn't sound large enough for dedicated GPUs. Apple seems hell-bent on integrated GPUs with the Apple Silicon. Trust me, I'd be singing a different song if Apple allowed for eGPUs by now on Apple Silicon, but it hasn't. And I really don't see any reason for that to change, at least not right now. For here, I'd look to history for inspiration. Apple did jam in a lot of Thunderbolt 2 ports on the 2013 as a lame apology for the lack of internal PCIe slots. I fully expect this computer to have an array of Thunderbolt 4 ports, certainly more than what's on the M1 Max. Maybe something like 6. There's this annoying meme that's been circulating around the Mac Pro community, and the type of people posting this are most likely going to be severely disappointed. Even though I ended up being this weird internet Mac Pro guy, I'm not terribly excited about this computer, as it'll be too expensive for a non-modular design, at least in my opinion. Now, I don't want to be old doom and gloom, and there's some good news on the horizon, which is the Mac Mini M1 Max rumor. There's a lot of rampant speculation based on the TSMC manufacturing process continuously going smaller and smaller with this nanometer CPU production. And Apple being one of the biggest clients will obviously be one of the biggest benefactors of this. This makes the Mac Mini more attractive, as in three to five years when you want to upgrade, you'll just sell off your old machine and buy a new one. Apple's not about to make socketed CPUs, and they seem hell-bent on not allowing for GPU upgrades. So what's the point of the Mac Pro? Well, that's a good question, and it's on Apple to answer it. Just a warning, this is an unscripted rant, but I really wanted to put this in. So why do I think I'm not going to be buying a Apple Silicon Mac Pro? Well, that boils down to just one word, modularity. And that is because I don't think the Mac Pro 2000 or whatever, Apple Silicon's going to have it. So let's break down all the things on the Mac Pro that are modular and how they apply to the Apple Silicon Mac Pro or the theoretical one at that. So first we have SSDs or storage. Right now, this has been something that Apple's done away with on all the Apple Silicon computers, but conceivably could happen on its Mac Pro. Well, on the Mac Pro 2019, and also I believe the iMac Pro, they use Apple NGFF, which was required if you wanted to be able to boot off those internal ports because those were the only ones that worked with Apple's uh, secure enclave. So that is a problem because you have to pay Apple SSD prices. You can't just use an adapter if you want to be able to boot off the internal SSD. So that's not great. Next, you have RAM. The RAM, as I previously mentioned, is LPDDR5, and that's not modular, so you're not going to be upgrading that. I don't see Apple changing it for this iteration of the Apple Silicon, so you can have modular RAM. Then next up, you have PCIe, which I don't think is going to exist on the Apple Silicon, but for argument's sake, let's pretend it does. Thus far, Apple has only allowed iGPUs or integrated GPUs. It has not allowed for DGPUs or dedicated GPUs. Those are the kind that are PCIe and you can install onto a computer through the PCIe bus and they work. So that could have been addressed at any point, at least if it was not hardware limited, through eGPUs, which we haven't had any support for under any Apple Silicon Mac thus far. So that means that Apple right now has written off dedicated GPUs as a technology. This means if we had PCIe, it would probably just be limited to things like I.O. cards, audio cards, and storage. Storage being the most exciting because 
Right now, SSDs keep getting faster and faster and they can saturate Thunderbolt 3 in certain configurations. So with that said, storage might be exciting the option for the Apple Silicon Mac Pro. Maybe they've let you even boot off it, who knows? Then if they did offer GPUs, I have this weird feeling they'd be MPX only and you wouldn't be able to buy AMD GPUs off the shelf anymore. Apple's GPU prices that are MPX are just really bad. If you've looked at them, they are just, oh man. There is, even in today's market when things are just out of whack, they're really expensive. They're more expensive than anything else. So if you were to go to the secondary market, pretty much anywhere else in the world, you'd still get a better buy on a GPU buying it through the secondary market on things like eBay. So that makes the PCIe not all that exciting or that great. It could happen, it could work out for us, but that's still not great. And then the last is non-socketed CPUs. These are SOCs, which are systems on a chip. That means that the Apple Silicon CPU will not be able to be upgraded. You're stuck with what you buy. So a computer that's probably gonna be stuck with a socketed CPU and the amount of RAM at purchase gets to be pretty rough. You have to eat all the costs up front, which is something that I conceivably would have never done to get a Mac Pro 2019. I have one, but there's a story behind that and it involves selling off old computers. So that brings me to my next and final point. Wow, what a great segue off the top of the head. I'm going to take a sip of beer to congratulate myself. It brings me to my last point, which is you can buy and sell Macs every three to five years and be on a train of buying things like maybe a Mac Mini or a Mac Mini Pro or whatever they're going to call it if they do that, or an iMac Pro, which is probably where I will land. Because if I can't upgrade my GPU and I can't upgrade my RAM, I'm not going to sink all my money into a computer and then be stuck with it and try and make that net work for the next decade like I accidentally did with my Mac Pro 2008. So that said, I think this is the end of the train for me as a Mac Pro user. I really hope it isn't and I hope Apple proves me wrong, but I don't think that I am. All right, thanks for watching and thanks for listening to my unscripted rant while I drink beer. Peace.